Howdy again everyone, today Lauer are continuing on their journey to create some of the world's brightest aperture wide angle lenses and what you see before you is no exception, their new 28mm f1.2 is the brightest aperture full frame 28mm lens ever made, offering you a pleasantly but not vastly wide angle field of view with potentially very out of focus backgrounds and snappy shutter speeds for working in darker situations. Nice, that's always been a winning combination for me, well if the image quality is there too, that is. It's a fully manual lens which will be available for Sony E, Canon RF, Nikon Z and L mount cameras and its price will be 600 US dollars, if the quality is there then that could be a reasonable value. I'd like to thank Lauer for loaning me an early copy of this lens for evaluation, although as usual this is a totally independent review. The first thing you notice about the Lauer 28mm f1.2 is how small it is for an f1.2 lens, especially if you compare it with, say, this Sigma 28mm f1.4 art lens, but the Lauer lens at 600 grams is still a little heavy, well no surprise, it's jam packed with glass. The lens's body is made of metal and it's a completely manual lens with no weather sealing. At the rear there's an aperture ring which can be set to turn smoothly or with very gentle clicks at each stop, although the stops themselves are not evenly spaced out. Then comes the broad metallic manual focus ring, it turns very smoothly and just precisely enough for shooting at f1.2, the lens exhibits some focus breathing, zooming in a bit as you focus more closely to your subject. The lens's front filter size is 62mm wide. It doesn't come with a normal lens cap, instead you get a metallic hood with a leather style cover which slips onto the front quite securely and well that's it, it's a very simple lens really, no electronics but nicely assembled. Alright, more importantly let's look at image quality, I'm testing it today on my Sony a7R 3 camera with its 42 megapixel full frame sensor, in camera corrections are not available with this lens. At f1.2 the middle of the image is quite sharp but unfortunately contrast is low and we see a little ghosting and colour fringing on contrasting edges. Let's have a look over in the corners now, there's still some resolution to be seen there but contrast is even lower and colour fringing even higher unfortunately. Let's stop down just a little to f1.4, the corners look the same but back in the middle we see a huge improvement, plenty more sharpness and contrast right away. At f2 image quality in the middle is now perfect, the corners see more brightness and contrast too, at f2.8, f4 and f5.6 we see gradual improvements which lead to excellent sharpness, although unfortunately colour fringing is still a bit strong on contrasting edges. The lens stays this sharp down to f16 where a little softness creeps in due to the effects of diffraction. Overall, the picture quality at f1.2 is disappointing, but stop down the aperture a little and you see big improvements very quickly. Ok, let's take a look at distortion and vignetting now. The good news is that the lens projects only a negligible level of barrel distortion, unsurprisingly though at f1.2 we see terribly strong vignetting, stop down to f2, f2.8 or f4 to see those corners finally begin to brighten up. The lens's minimum focus distance is a problem, it's only half a metre which is really far from your subject, you just can't get close enough to anything small here. At the closest distances that ghosting is even worse at f1.2, f1.4 looks better, f2 looks great. Let's see how the lens works against bright lights now, uh oh, it's bad news here too, as a whole load of flaring and glaring pops up when shooting at f1.2. Stop down to f2 though, as I do here, for a bit of an improvement. While we're working in the dark, let's take a look at coma smearing, it's clearly there at f1.2, stop down to f2 and it's reduced and at f4 it's gone. Let's zoom out now and look for sun stars, unfortunately even if you stop down to f11, sun stars just don't happen. Let's take a look at the quality of this lens's bokeh now and it's rather busy to be honest, with outlining on specular highlights causing some jumbling that some people might really like but isn't my own cup of tea. 
And finally, related to Bokka comes longitudinal chromatic aberration. Some good news here, even at brighter apertures it's not very high, and at f2 anything that was there is gone. Overall, well, this lens is quite ambitious, the world's brightest 28mm full frame lens, and admittedly the resulting pictures it can get you are really dramatic. It's a bit too much of an ambitious design to perform well technically though, and when shooting at f1.2 it's blighted with image quality problems, particularly soft corners, low contrast, serious vignetting. Stop it down and the lens performs better, but still, this is a lens for the artists out there, and definitely not the pixel peepers. Thanks for watching everyone, and a huge thank you to my supporters over on Patreon. These free videos are fun for me to make, but take a lot of time and money to put together, so Patreon supporters make a huge difference to me keeping this channel trucking on, as well as getting all kinds of exclusive bonus content and early access. Ciao for now everyone.